Hello there, and welcome to the Nintendo Club Podcast. This is level 21 of the show. Join me today to discuss all things Nintendo. We have John. How's it going, John? Hey, Tim. What's up? Not the much. I've been. I've got Pokemon fever. I've been playing yeah, so much, you know. You and the rest of the world. <laughs> four million myself. of us, at least. Yeah, you know. four million. Yeah, and four right million in two days. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Aaron, welcome. How's it going? Hey guys, how you doing? Doing good, doing good. So you you all have been playing Pokemon, and I battled some of you and lost sometimes, <laughs> won sometimes. <laughs> You know. Yeah, I've been playing a lot of Pokemon. I've been playing 51 hours and 21 minutes, to be exact. <laughs> I, I beat you at 65 hours and 24 minutes. <laughs> okay. I've caught in Mewtwo, the X Legendary, the Z Legendary, and the Legendary Bird, uh, Ardino. <laughs> oh, wow. Which, you... well, I'll talk about a little bit later here. Um, but yeah, I've got quite the team. Cool. <laughs> Aaron, how about you? How are you like? How are you? Yeah, so I am not sure my exact playtime because when I check my 3DS, uh, the play Just log, go to your save file when you load well, up yeah, your continue. Yeah, but the problem that with that is that I was so used to, you know, th- to the original DS, you could just close it and then, you know, just it just pauses the game where it was. And although that does work on the 3DS, it seems like sometimes my time keeps going. So. The last so you're like 100 I, hours or something stupid? <laughs> the last time I closed it, I was at uh, 28 hours. Over, I closed it, and I haven't played it since, and now it says 41 hours. And I'm not sure <laughs> why. <laughs> so, that's, so how I always cl- that's how I always close my system, and it only says 51 hours yeah, for me. So I'm a little confused. So, um, ba- so Pokedexes, where are you guys at with okay. that? I'm at 357. That's how much you've caught? It's the it's it's I think it's what I've seen. I've caught okay, like yeah. two fifty, I think. Okay, I have two eighty eight for what I've seen. Um, we should let's start with this. How many badges? I, obviously, Tim, eight, you have eight. You have all I've eight. got eight. I've got yeah. Plus okay, one, plus I, I have seven. I'm literally I am literally if you can see me right now in the eighth gym as we oh, speak. Oh, very cool. <laughs> um, I will tell you the I, elite four yeah. gave me a lot of. Crap, because I was not good enough to beat. Uh, I did like <laughs> some of my Pokemon were not up to snuff. Like I, I did, you know, figure out what el- elementals I had to use and stuff. It was yeah, a challenge. Well, What's you, Aaron? I only have four badges right now. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, no worries. But uh, I've been spending so much time trying to catch this one Pokemon, Abra. So I can yeah. Quick ball, quick ball. You need the quick ball. Oh this. man. He's quick too ball. early. I think he's too early to get the quick ball. Once you get the quick ball, then you just throw it immediately because otherwise I, he teleports. I yeah. oh, oh oh yeah, quick ball or put him to sleep. Abra, you have to throw him right when you see him. I have okay. Abra's third evolution, Alakazam, and it is it's it's worth having. Yeah. So yeah, I've been spending all my time trying to get that after the the fourth gym. So. I will tell you, once you get your legendaries, that Elite Four and Final Boss Battle, you can just go through that over and over again and rack up all... You get like $60,000 for each time you go through it, and you get the same amount of money every time. So I was I bought uh, the Mega last uh, the Mega Charizard and Mega um, Venus Store Stone for $500,000 each, <laughs> and I was able to afford that, and I still have like $400,000 left here. <laughs> and you can also, like, you can beat... Both of those, uh, the final boss fights with the Z Legendary and the X Legendary, uh, they're strong enough with their different elemental stuff to knock out all of them in like one hit. So once you have that, you can have four different Pokemon <laughs> go from level. So I've done this many times. You, you have a level one Pokemon, and you fully evolve them by the time you leave that fight 30 minutes later. <laughs> so I've yeah, gone from like level one, level 30 in a single. Uh, Many times, it's a lot of fun doing. I I traded someone for a level one Bulbasaur yesterday. Less than twenty four hours later, that Bulbasaur is a level fifty one Venusaur. <laughs> the the shared XP is just fantastic. It's it really it's is. it's yeah. So uh, the highest level Pokemon I have is level seventy eight. It's my Raichu. The lowest level is my level fifty, and that's my Aerodactyl. And See, my I'm, my most, first my first level one hundred Pokemon was Pikachu. So you already have one at level 100? I have two now, actually. 
Uh, my ex, legendary ex, is at a hundred, and he's like bad to the bone. No one can like, yeah, he's he's unbeatable. See, I got the legendary Pokemon, but I'm not carrying it around with me. I'm not. It feels like it, I'm just invincible when I have that. Dude. Yeah, it kind of is. Which sometimes I like having that, but other times I don't. So Tim, you are kind of frustrating. Seeing you on Twitter, getting all these wonder <laughs> trades. I don't know how you do it. I got a wonder trade for a Charizard. What? You yes. Did a, you did a wonder trade for a Charizard? <laughs> I got a Charizard back. I was so excited. Okay, so this wonder trade thing is awesome. This is it's probably so my cool. favorite thing about this game. It's so much fun. I got. You think you'll throw away all trash, but they don't always do that. I got a couple of Pokemon that were their exclusive to the game. I didn't get the Y version. I got a Zubat. I got some cool stuff. I mean, it's it's fun. I'm gonna do it right now as we so, speak. So, <laughs> you know the Scatterbug that we all made fun of initially. Like, we all, like, that's a throwaway Pokemon, right? Who would want ever want that? Well, evidently, mm -hmm. that is one of the most important Pokemons in this game. Uh, because it does three evolutions. And on its third evolution, it's region-specific. Oh, so, really? basically, there are 18 variations of that third evolution. And every region has a different one. So, when you go on the GTS trading system, you can see what they look like, or offer them up in trade. This is a huge market. People evolving Scatterbucks <laughs> in final form and offering up the trade and then getting back different ones. Because when people trade for yours, uh, if you offer it up, generally they won't want the same one you have, so they'll try to get you a different color. And I've accumulated so far... Let me load up here. Um, I've got five different... or Six, six different variations with... Um, i got six... Scatter bugs ready to evolve and trade up. So there's 18 in total they can get. And some of these are so rare because no one plays in certain regions mm -hmm. that people are trading like legendaries for some of these, you know, scatter bug evolutions. It's do, so bizarre. Do they, do they count as different Pokemon in the Pokedex? They don't. But okay. it, it, they do look different. They have different sprites and they are different colors. Some are very beautiful. But yeah, just merely for your gratification that you have every 18 of them and. I really want that to happen, and it'll take me a while. But I've gone scatterbug hunting in the first route before to just uh, bring four of them along on my uh, on my Elite Four quest. And when you do that, you'll evolve mm -hmm. them right away. So another cool thing about these tradings is that, that this Global Trade Center is. There's a lot of Pokemon that only evolve through trade. Like Kadabra only evolves to Alakazam if he trades. Hunter only evolves to Gengar with he trades. And you have your music on. It might no, be me. Sorry. No. Oh, sorry. A little, a little distracting. <laughs> sorry. A little distracting. Sorry. I didn't even realize it was up that high. Um, so yeah, there's everyone knows that when you trade these Pokemon, they evolve. So there's so many poke or so many people looking to trade the same Pokemon. You know, Hunter for Hunter, Kadabra for Kadabra, um, Graveler for Graveler, because they know they evolve. So I love this trade center because it's it's so easy to find the Pokemon I want. I can just search for it. The filtering has never worked for me. So when I try to filter to only ones that I have. It always says reboot your uh, game. What? Does that not happen for you when you say filter to only the ones that I own or that are in my region? I didn't even, I didn't even know that was an option. Yeah, so it's a little hard to get to, but once you already do your filter for, for what you're looking for, hit the search button again. There's a little like magnifying glass in the bottom left. It never works, though. It, yeah, it, it always works for me. Oh, really? Okay, they might have fixed yeah. that. I'm trading right now. I'm looking for. I'm going to look for something. But the yeah, GTS this... trading is so cool. So you can you can either deposit a Pokemon to offer it up to the world to trade for. When you do that, you look you say, "I want this for this." Yep. So you have the four million Pokemon people, you know, trading for what you want. That's how and I got my Bulbasaur. It's fantastic. I I, uh, I got a Charmander, a Bulbasaur. I've got I'm breeding Squirtles now. So if you start breeding <laughs> the Squirtles. Uh, people want those, and you can get some good Pokemon that way. So I just figured this out. You get your Ditto, and then you bring Ditto and Squirtle to the to your daycare, and they just go, you know, log wild, maiden, and produce some eggs. And... I just got a Ditto. Ditto is the most handy of Pokemon because there is no sex to that Pokemon. It's either male or female, and that Ditto just mates with any Pokemon in the game and spits out Squirtles or, you know, Haunters or whatever, you know. I think legendaries it won't mate with, but you know. 
Really? I think there's a lot of people wanting dittos on the Global Trade Center when I see... It's one of the, it's one of the Pokemon I see the, of the most of, of, yeah, I'm looking for a ditto, yeah, I'm looking yeah, for a ditto. Yeah, very popular. So go to yeah. that Pokemon Forest and capture as many as you can. Yep, I just, I, yeah, I just left the Pokemon Forest. And uh, Jigglypuff was around there too, and I was so excited. I've got like seven Jigglypuffs because I was yep. so excited about getting Jigglypuff. Because <laughs> um, it's such a cute character from the anime. Yeah, so this trade feature just makes this game even more huge, more time-consuming, you know? I mean, I, I already thought I was going to be spending a lot of time in this game, but, but then with the trade, especially, like, Wonder Trade, just mm-hmm. sit down for, like, so long just doing Wonder Trade. Just I see did, what you get. I did them for an hour. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, literally, over an hour last night, I was Wonder Trading. Now, yeah. know what's kind of frustrating for me, though, is the... Um, the legendary birds. So, after you finish the game, you get the opportunity to catch one of the legendary birds from the first Pokemon game, Red, Blue, and um, the other one, a Green, I think. Uh, but it's the bird that you get is based on your starter. So, if you get Chespin as your starter, you get the Blue Articuno. I really wanted the f- uh, the Red one, Moltres, but Moltres. you needed to pick I think Froakie to do that or something. And uh, there's no really way to get Maltres unless I trade my valuable Art Articuno <laughs> for that. And I don't want to do that. So I'm going to end up, to get all three, it sounds like you're going to have to either have someone really nice and trade it with you for a crap Pokemon they can reproduce, or you're going to have to play this game three times and transfer stuff to the bank after you're done with each playthrough. Or It, it could take a while. I'm going to trade with my friend that I know who I can sit there and trade and trade back with. Um, in the original games, you got all three legendary birds. You got the. Um... So in Fire Red, you can catch all three. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, because I'm getting Fire Red, and when December comes around, I'm gonna be ready. So I'm. I've got Fire Red, I have uh, Soul Silver, and I've got Black Two. So I can transfer from Fire Red to Soul to uh, Black Two, then the, the bank. So when December comes, I'm gonna be ready for some cool transfers. That'll be fun. <laughs> um, as far as the legendary birds. It took me like four hours to chase this thing down because this is, I'm not sure if you want me to, how much of a spoiler this is, but. Well, I, I understand, it's my understanding that once you beat the Elite Four, the, the legendary birds showed up randomly, like just, you were just out in the wild yeah. and just boom, out of nowhere, there's a legendary. So it shows up, there's a big star effect, and then it flies away instantly. And then I, I didn't think anything of it because I did quick not ball. know. What? Quick ball? No, 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 no. It gets much more crazy than that. This is a wild goose chase in the best sense of the word. So it showed up. I didn't really realize what that was until I listened to other podcasts talking about this, where that's actually a legendary bird that, because I didn't know, our, it's a blue bird. I've only seen the Moltres. Oh, really? No, yeah. Um, so the blue bird was like, who the heck is this dude? He's a legendary. Uh, <laughs> so evidently, you can look in your Pokedex, and it will tell you which route he is hiding in, and he will move a total of 12 times from route to route. You have to do random encounters. Sometimes you'll miss him, even if you're at the same route he is at, because you only get so many chances to do the random encounters. And if you fly to that route or use a train or anything, he will randomly generate to a new route. So my first hour trying to track these down, I didn't realize the flying made him fly away. I just thought I was missing him. So I spent an hour flying route to route thinking I was making progress. And uh, um, I figured out you have to actually just, you know, bike or rollerblade to these routes. It was like a four-hour chase to finally have them settle down and go to this random island off the coast of uh, this world where you can go out and catch them finally. So that was uh, Saturday evening from like 8 p.m. to midnight. Wow. (laughs) Intense. So, yeah, do not fly. That, that was my big lesson about that, trying to capture that. That's similar to Gold and Silver, how the legendary dogs worked. They showed up randomly, and you could you kind of chase them around the, the world. That, that's, I guess that's been around in the... It's wild know, goose chase. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> it, it, was, it was a lot of fun, but it's like, I was getting, and I was like cheering when I hit him. It's like, yes, see, I found him. <laughs> like, only ten more to go. And it, it, was, it's a, it was like, post-gameplay, it's like, I didn't like they actually made a riveting experience after you're finished with the story, which is cool that they're able to manage that. 
I under, uh, one thing I think that's pretty cool after the Elite Four is you still got to go around and get all the Mega Pokemon evolutions. You got to get all the like mm-hmm. the the stones for those Pokemon, right? Have you got? And there's an eight to nine p.m. hour where you find ones you'll never find any other time of the day. Like there's some special thing during those hours. So I missed it today, but uh, eight to nine p.m. There's an hour, like a golden hour, <laughs> you can find the extra stones. And so I, I was able to trade to get a Bulbasaur, a Bulbasaur, an extra Squirtle, and Charmander. So I've got now a Blastoise and all those in final form. And I stole my original Squirtle at its um, <laughs> level 90 now. Pro, wow. pro producing, you know. So <laughs> wow. yeah, I'm gonna have him. Yeah, he's he's kick butt Squirtle. You know, he's my he's my guy. <laughs> um, but so, it's just a lot of fun. All the Mega Evolutions trying to track those down. Uh, and there's just so many random side quests. There's this whole, like, detective side quest you can do after the game and stuff. And it's all fun. Cool, yeah. A lot of good stuff in the game. Um, there's a few things that I, I'm not too happy about with the game. And yeah, I don't let's know. get into that. Um, so, the, the thing about the original Pokemon games was they're never too story-intensive. In fact, they're, they're really th- the thing that told the story in the old Pokemon games was kind of you going through your journey and kind of talking to people and that kind of told the story, which is still similar to that. Um, but man, these some of these cutscenes and these characters I find were, were just kind of dry and just kind of... It feels you, very... You didn't get warm and bubbly when you had the romantic uh, fireworks? I mean, I... <laughs> it, it's just there's... All, they have all these characters that kind of follow you around and I... I I found it more distracting than I did engaging. I don't know about you guys, or if you guys enjoyed that part about it. It just, I like the original aspect of the game of having a rival that you kind of battle with. This just kind of got, especially towards the, Aaron, I know you're not here yet, but the, towards the maybe seventh, eighth badge, there's a lot of repetitive fighting with with Team Flare. And I don't know, I just wish that that story had a little bit more uh, interesting and more more. I don't know. It just it feels. I kind of like the result of the story. I thought it was kind of cool. The result, event. the result is good, but getting up to there is just so not good. Like they just don't do. A, Team Flare is just kind of there. There's no like. I don't know. The original games. I feel like you follow Team Rocket around, and at every point Team Rocket left these little hints about what they were doing and everything. And this game, okay. it's not till the end that it all comes together. I felt like a lot of it was just kind of there to be. Be more like the anime in a way, but yeah, this could just be me. Yeah, so I haven't got or I haven't played too many of the old ones, so I don't really know how how well the story was in those. But um, I am enjoying this story element, um, just kind of having something else there other than go around fighting all the time. There's there's kind of something else you're kind of trying to trying to progress throughout the throughout the entire game kind of gives me something else to to look into you know so i enjoy it so far okay yeah the the, the story in the original pokemon games was it wasn't even much of a story it was just kind of discovering the towns and discovering kind of the stories behind those towns and kind of where they fit in in the pokemon world and this is definitely more driven of you're you're a man on a mission which is cool i don't mind it it definitely feels like it's it's kind of a re this this pokemon feels like any other is a reboot of the series where they're changing a lot of things and and i can definitely see the pokemon going here on out being a lot more story driven than it's been in the past and i feel like this is just the beginning um so I'm sure the next Which Pokemon. could be pretty cool if they do it right. Oh, yeah, it could definitely be cool. I mean, everyone, you know, everyone loves the, the animes, especially, I, you know, I grew up watching the animes, and it's fun to watch. It's fun to get to know the characters and have the story. So um, they're just trying to bring that element into it. Um, one gripe I have with the game is the only Pokemon they gave the proper noise to is Pikachu in the Pokedex. Pikachu's <laughs> the only one who says Pikachu... All the others have the original screeching noises. I just find that irritating that they didn't... <laughs> it, that they just, you know, they picked Pikachu, obviously, because Pikachu's the most famous Pokemon. It just seems unfair to all the other Pokemon that yeah, they, they didn't put that effort in. I don't maybe know, for you know, Z, maybe for Z. Maybe for Z, I don't know. It just... So I'm one Eevee away from all the Eevee evolutions. I'm missing the brand new ones. So I have seven of the Eevee evolutions. I need... Uh, the the latest one, the fairy one that looks all weird. Sylveon. Um, yeah. So uh, that's a, another mission I'm going to get knocked out in the next right. few days. Here. You got Umbreon and Espeon. Mm-hmm. 
those are harder to get. Don't you have to do some friendship stuff to get those? Is, yeah, I, I play with the Pokemon and me. Um, I don't think you really need to do that stuff, though. Because uh, on one of them, the daytime one, I just evolved it by having it in my team and it being happy that it was with me because I'm just so cool to be with, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but for the Umbreon, I was getting frustrated because it was leveling up. It was at night. I was playing, rubbing its head, feeding it food, and it took like 20 uh, leveling ups to finally evolve. It's like I was spending the whole night trying to evolve that stupid Umbre- uh, Umbreon, and it finally happened, so. And gold and silver, when they introduced that whole evolution through friendship, it was very di- it was very difficult. I found to get your Pokemon to really like you. It, with this whole new kind of Pokemon training thing, they've made that a lot easier. You can kind of play with your Pokemon, and they they kind of instantly like you after just a little bit of effort. Now, EV evolutions will those guys mate with the Ditto? Uh, I don't know. I was not sure which what the limitations are there. So when you're so you can can you mate two Squirtles and make a Squirtle? Yep, definitely can. So you don't need two Blastoises to make a Squirtle? No, I don't think so. So I guess you can use any Eevee evolution with a Ditto and make an Eevee, I guess. Well, I was wondering if I'd get the evolution, so I could be training this harder to evolve Pokemon. Or, since it's a baby, will it become a bit... Ba- there's no such thing as a baby evolved Pokemon. I don't know. Well, I'll figure that out. I'll try some mating <laughs> experiments. Uh, it sounds really wrong. <laughs> but as far as uh, the online stuff, it's so much fun doing the online battles with everyone, and uh, I think that's pretty cool. I still need to find a fourth person so we can do like a four-person battle. That'd be cool. Yeah, I like the online battles a lot. They're a lot of fun. It's it's They can get intense. Yeah. It's definitely way better <laughs> than the system used to be. Yeah, it is pretty intense. I'd like to, to throw in that I did beat Tim finally. It felt really good. <laughs> yeah. I should admit, though, I had most of my team in the leveling up stage where I didn't have my good guys yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, okay. I don't want okay. to hear those excuses. I mean, I was leveling some guys <laughs> up, you know. Uh, my Raichu destroyed three of Tim's Pokemon in one battle. <laughs> Stupid and then, Raichu. And then so the sweet. next battle, his his legendary just killed all. See, I guys. held off. Like, I held off. It's like, let me not use the legendary because John will just die instantly. And then I got killed on the first battle. So let me just start out and yeah. demoralize you a little bit. But uh, with the Z, the Z legendary, that dude is pretty bad to bone, too. And it's wild having a team with X legendary, Z legendary, the bird. Mewtwo and some other like mega That's an, evolutions. You're unstoppable. That's unstoppable. <laughs> I really want the Y. I'm missing out on the Y. I need that. You don't have the Y legendary? Well, how, how can I get it without, you know, playing y? Y? You can trade. There's a lot of people asking for it on trades. But who, what am I going to give them? Like, I'm not going to give them my ex, dude. Yeah, I'm sure you can find something. I'll have to find something, but maybe there's stupid people out there that don't know what they get. I traded, um, so I did a wonder trade, and I got the jaw fossil Pokemon. You know how you pick one of the fossil Pokemon, the jaw one or the other fossil, I forget the name. Um, uh, I traded, did a wonder trade, got the jaw fossil Pokemon, which is like Tyrant or something. It's like a T-Rex, which is pretty rare, and I traded that for a Bulbasaur. Yeah, I, I chose the sale one, stupidly, instead of the T-Rex, which I really <laughs> wanted. Um, so as far as X or Y, we've got a question in the uh, Q&A from David. Uh, we all got X, and if you get Y, I would love that because I could trade with you some Y exclusives and vice versa, and that would be pretty cool. So um, both are great. Uh, the only differences between them are, I think, uh, 20 Pokemon, including the legendary uh, Pokemon that you get, mm-hmm. and some of the uh, Mega Evolution, so Charizard is a different color with Mega Evolution, and X, he's like a black and purple kind of uh, evolution. So um, they're very similar games, just it depends on which Pokemon are in them. And I will eventually pick up Y probably in December when Pokemon Bank comes out, because <laughs> I'm that crazy. But <laughs> That's what I plan on doing as well, because I don't yeah. see myself getting all of these that I want through trades. Because so. I, I want a complete Pokedex this time around. For Generation <laughs> 6, I'm going to own every single Pokemon. You Do you really think you're going to need to buy both games to get every single Pokemon? I'm just trying to figure out how would I trade to get a Y Legendary. 
I'm telling you, Tim, when I'm searching on there, you could probably treat a Squirtle for that thing. No way. Really? I, I think you'd be surprised. Well, I mean, let me go through there. Uh, maybe not now, but... <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I'll look into the trading stuff, but uh, it also provides me a nice opportunity to restart save files and why, so I can get, you know, different starters and uh, the legendary birds and stuff. But with legendary birds, I might just transfer them from, from Fire Red, get them all in there. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, the friend code stuff is really vital to this game, I feel, uh, be, as far as just having a complete 3DS friend code. So if you have a hundred friend codes registered on your system, you get some cool benefits after you finish the game. So there's this whole friend safari feature where you, each friend that's registered on your 3DS gives you a little safari zone, and there's two or three Pokemon in each of those in zones that are different, and some of them you can't find in the game if you don't have friend safari and enough friends there. So <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty ingenious by Nintendo to incentivize Let's have everyone friend each other to make that happen. So that's, that's kind of cool. That's actually really cool. Uh, one thing that's missing from this game is all the, I think all the other Pokemon games had the Safari part where you, you go through and it, you do the Pokemon Safari thing where you catch Pokemon with bait rather than, than battling them. Is it kind of like that? Is that how it kind of works? How do you... So um, first off, very strongly, David, uh, that's, he is both, so excellent and... Our friend codes are going to be in the show notes and stuff, and pop your friend code in the, the, the FAQ or the YouTube comments, and we will respond back with ours, and we can do some I'll cool trading. You. I'll add you. So we will add you guys, We will add you for sure, so just put your friend code in there, and we'll uh, respond back with that later on. But anyways, uh, friend safari. Uh, no, so you basically just go up to this uh, desk and say, would you like to go on a friend safari? And when you do that, uh, you get to select from a list... Uh, and it says the, the type of Pokemon you'll find, so water, ground, and it'll have uh, two or three slots for Pokemon. If your friends are playing the game, you'll get three Pokemon. If they're not, you'll get two Pokemon in your Safari. And after you've identified them and encountered them, the next time you go in there, it'll mark which ones are in that Safari zone. So it makes it pretty easy to go back and find additional ones. So we have two Jonathans now on the call. <laughs> Johns. Uh, I'm not sure what happened to John there. But uh, so what's your plan, uh, Aaron, as far as getting through the rest of these here? Would, are you um, going to be grinding a lot, trying to find everything on your way? or? Um, you went too okay. Sorry about that delay yeah. there, everyone. You're Weird. back, John. Weird, yeah. Google <laughs> Google kicked me off. <laughs> you did that to me earlier. So yeah, basically, friend uh, the friend Safari. That's basically how it works. Each zone you enter gets two or three Pokemon. Once you identify them, they're marked in your Safari, so you know which ones are which. So yeah, Tim, I said to you last week or maybe the week before that I think you'd be disappointed in the amount of gameplay you'd be getting out of this game. I think I'm, <laughs> I think I'm eating my words on that because I. <laughs> well, there's a lot. I mean, just just like we said, with the Wonder Trade. I could sit there for hours and just trade random Pokemon. There's so much to do, and it sounds like, from what you're saying, there's a ton of stuff to do after you beat the actually, you know, quote unquote, mm -hmm. beat the game. So. There's a whole detective type thing to do. Uh, I'm not, I haven't done much of that yet, but there's a lot of stuff. Uh, there is um, there's this whole Pokemon radar thing where each day you try to catch a bunch of the same Pokemon for studying and stuff like that. So hmm. there is some cool stuff post-play. And I've, I'm also three hours in the Soul Silver. I started that up uh, today. Nice. <laughs> so I can see why people really love Soul Silver, and uh, I'm enjoying it. I picked up the uh, Fire Starter in that one. That is the little... Ch uh, uh, wait, don't tell me. Something to dill. Something... Uh-huh, uh-huh. <sighs> Never mind, just tell me. I what don't know. It? Citadel. <laughs> yeah. Citadel, that's it. How do you? <laughs> but it sounds like I can't. I to get those in into X or Y, you have to start from there because there was only a trade Pokemon. All the starters really never oh, yeah. reappeared, did they? Except for no, these originals. No, yeah, starters are usually some pretty rare Pokemon. And at the same time, they're easy to get if you know what you're doing. 
And uh, yeah, and X and Y. X and Y, he, here's another tiny gripe I have with the game. It feels like they kind of hand you things a little bit more than they do with other Pokemon games. They're just kind of like, oh, here's this. Here's three starter Pokemon. They give you three, you know, a Torchic. They give you a choice between the Squirtle, you know, Bulbasaur, Charmander, or the originals. They give you another one at the beginning of the game. I, there's a you lot of... You get a legendary of, starter. They, they, you get a Lucario. They just, here, here you go. Here's a Lucario. Um, there's a legendary, plus there's another legendary Mew. Um, there's legendary... I mean, there's it's good because there's, you know, everyone I've obviously... heard there's actually less legendaries in this game than in previous games, though. Really? As far as what you can capture post-game. Because I guess in the I first one, you capture three birds and a Mewtwo and, like... All that. And, so. Yeah, and red and yeah, red and blue. You can catch Mew, but or Mew, or excuse me, Mewtwo. But I don't think that. I think that was the only one where Mewtwo really showed up besides this one. Um, Seriously, Mewtwo yeah. is like red exclusive and blue. Yeah. Oh yeah, Mewtwo's been yeah. Um, this is really the first Pokemon game huh. since Red and Blue where they've gone back and I really feel like almost all the original 150 Pokemon are in this game. Um, Black and white definitely had a, a lot of new Pokemon, not many of the originals, so. Okay. So, Tim, you were asking me before we had a little bit of problems. Mm-hmm. You asked me a question. You weren't able to finish. What was it? About oh, yes. Playing, about playing um, X1. So, are you... How much time are you putting in each night? Are you uh, going after just capturing new Pokemon, or are you going after story mode, or... So I was trying to capture for a while. I, I played through about uh, Wednesday. I haven't played it since Wednesday. I, I've been at school and working. Okay. Very, so, responsible. Uh, Very responsible. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I've been wanting to play, but I've had so much homework. So um, basically, like the days I play are, are, are Sunday through Wednesday. Okay. Um, in, until I'm finished with this semester. But yeah, right now, I'm kind of focused on catching some ones or trading for some ones that I want. Um, and the story is still there, kind of progressing town to town, but not as fast as, as some people. So, yeah. Did you ever encounter, either of you, did you ever encounter the problem of your too high level to command your Pokemon <laughs> for a yeah. gym fight? Yeah. No, I haven't run into that, but I was very close. All of my Pokemon were at, like, level 30. I was like, please don't level up before I get to this gym because then I'm going to lose. Yeah, but, this uh, I, I found most of the people I talked to had that problem with the second gym where it was such yeah. a span of time from the first gym to the second gym that... I was getting worried at first, and the second one was like, oh, my crap, they're all yeah. at level 30 or whatever. Yeah, me too. I think everyone was. And I had one disobey my command at the end. It's like, oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that was a problem. I should mention I was able to one uh, to GTS trade Froakie and Braz uh, the Fox in the second evolution. Oddly enough, Fennekin is not on that list of people that you can trade for. So you, um, the the list of what you can trade for those are only Pokemon you have seen in your Pokedex. Mind blown. How, yeah, Mind that, blown. yeah. So if you haven't seen the Pokemon, you can't ask for it in a trade. That's what I figured Except out. Except you can search for Pokemon. Yeah. If you go to the bottom list, what do you want? You can uh, type in a name and search for it. You can t- you could type in a name, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I gotta try this. I didn't know that. So you could ask for your Cinnadrill uh, from Soul <laughs> Silver. Yeah. So I was pretty surprised during um, a wonder trade. I almost traded this to Tim, but I, I decided a baton. Not. <laughs> I really wanted your yeah. baton. Yeah. And then I I looked it up, and it was a rare a rare one from uh, was it pearl or was it emerald? One I forget. Um, I mean, yeah. obviously, every Pokemon that you're trading with today can be found in either X or Y. Because there is no my other great to, Pokemon yet. Yeah, there's no way to trade right now. Yeah, Which is kind of mind-blowing that all these Pokemon we're trading with are in this game somewhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know where... To- it says I've seen people with Totodiles or asking for Totodiles. I don't know how they're getting these if they can't trade with gold and silver... I don't know what's going on. They're in there somewhere. Like, they're hidden. It's crazy, Maybe the Friend though. Safari? Like, maybe the Friend Safari, if you have enough... It Maybe that's random, and you get stuff that you normally can't find. I'm catching a sight there right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like different times of day, different Pokemon do Trying come to. Out. Oh, yeah. I, they, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And well, it's... Yeah. You don't get, yeah, you don't get knocked owls during the day, that's for sure. So I also, just the last Pokemon topic before we move on, 
uh, maybe you sure? the last. You sure? Maybe the last. Uh, so I'm playing Soul Silver now, and I st- dabbled in Black Two again. I want to progress that enough to where I can trade Pokemon into it. So I need the Pal Park, and after that, I don't know. Um, but uh, it was a wildly different experience with my starter team in Soul Silver <laughs> because you have to actually play as the lead Pokemon. This dude until he's at level, you know, 18, then migrate him back, and you have to play with all your Pokemon to get a good team. In this one, I had just, you know, the Froakie sitting in the back lines, and I fully evolved him in, in an hour yeah. without touching him. It's so different. Yeah, it's it's definitely different. One, the one thing that's huge to me different is not only that, um, the fact that your Pokemon gain experience, even if you catch the Pokemon before, that was never the case. You would mm-hmm. you would not gain any experience when you caught them. Which is weird, because um, it's a harder fight when you're trying to catch them. Yeah, it is weird. So this game definitely is doing a lot more to move your... to level up your Pokemon. Like, I, I mean, kind of feel like in the... Like, why bother leveling up all the Pokemon and Fire Red and all those? I'm just going to transfer the ones <laughs> into... Into X and do all my leveling up there. So I'm gonna have my basic teams, and I'm at my basic basic teams, and then from there I will uh, evolve different people. So, anyways, <laughs> so uh, John, uh, you were a little concerned uh, with the new Pokemon games that they might have a little too much. I remember you were talking about white uh, and black. You didn't enjoy some <laughs> of the some of the new features. How are you feeling about the new things in this game? Like, do you like the direction, or or do you still prefer the the classic? I like I like the direction they're going with everything in this game. Um, I, I the Diamond and Pearl were the last ones I was seriously dived into, and the, the, they a lot of times in Pokemon once they they change something they they don't ever change it. They keep going in that direction forever, and mm-hmm. I'm I'm glad to see they did about face on a lot of things. Number one the online mode before in, in all the other Pokemon games with online. You had to go to the Pokemon Center to get online. You had to jump in and do all this other stuff. This this is completely jumped around where you just literally tap a few buttons, boom, you're online, you're trading with people. Um, I, I really like the mechanics where you can, regi- you, you, know, you can register an item with the Y button. Um, you can now register up to four items. I think that's nice. The only th- I like the, the, the super trading. Um, I like all the little... Things are have adding, you, like the videos, the, uh... Have you done the L equals A switch? No, what settings? is that? No, what is that? It's an option. So this was an original feature on the red and uh, the soul silvers and stuff. You can say L equals A, and when that's selected in your controls, you can just, you know, hit the L button instead of A. So when you're grinding, you can literally do it one-handed where you're moving through the forest and hitting A, A, A to kill folks or... <laughs> um, progress through screens. See, it, that, it, it also it's good for your. Um, you don't get uh, repetitive stress injury because you're able to change it up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I like it because they they did take a lot of the grind out of Pokemon. I feel like there's before there was a lot of sit there repetitive, repetitive, repetitive. They they've seen that they make that less of a burden in this game. The big thing I um, wish there was was the mapping system. I feel kind of sucks. Um, on this game, it could be a little bit better. I feel like I have this bottom screen where they have a few options, menus you can flip through. Why is my map not on there all the time? Mm-hmm. Why why is not fly accessible right on that map? You know, just little things like that where I, I think I, that second screen could have been a utilized a little bit more. I usually sit there and have the second screen on, have it on the people page. Yeah, I do um, too. I think that's where most people keep it or on. Or I put Pokemon in me sometimes. Yeah, I'm trying to be see, happy to my Eevee. <laughs> see, here's the thing. I, I've never used the Pokemon in me. Um, yeah, when you're doing Eevee evolutions, it's handy. I've done the Super Train a little, but yeah, I feel like the second screen... You can earn evolution stones in the Super Training. Oh, really? That's cool. I've never done it, though. You can. Um, let's uh, briefly answer this guy's question about joining Which, this Hangout. Sure. Um, this Hangout, you cannot join, but in the future, we'll do uh, community nights where... Basically, all you need to do is become a member of the club, uh, the Nintendo Club podcast, a uh, Google Plus community, and when you are in that community, I can have uh, live hangouts with everyone that's in that uh, community. So join that community, 
and we will do uh, club nights or community nights every every now and then. So uh, that's how you would uh, join one of these hangouts in the future. So thanks for watching, and let's get back to the whole uh, EV training and stuff like that. <laughs> I wish I wish these buttons were bigger at the bottom. I'm getting nitpicky, I know, but now, did I, you know, I wish John, they were did you know, <laughs> When you hit X, you can actually move those six things around. What? So yeah. hit X, you have yeah. the Pokemon, you have the Pokedex, tap and hold. I see that. Hold on. Isn't that cool? Oh, wow, you're right. I totally can. Now, as playing some of the older, you know, Black 2 even, you can't rearrange your Pokemon by tapping and holding. You have to say Switch. It's so bizarre in the older games. Yeah, and that's, yeah, and that's another thing where they've... They've improved. There's a lot of dragging and dropping. I can rearrange which moves, which order my moves are in, which is awesome. So, yeah, I do, I do like the direction this game's going. I'm really excited. You can rearrange the order of the moves? Oh, yeah. You go into the summary of your Pokemon, you can drag and drop them. It's awesome. That is life-changing, because I, I need to change my Farfetch'd mm. fly to, you know, false yeah. swipe. It would be much better or cut, you know. Exactly, yeah. That's that's where they've taken some of the grind out, is little, little things like that. So, I do... Aaron liked the direction of this Pokemon. I'm excited to see... I'm interested to see if the 3DS will have another Pokemon um, series on it like the DS did. I'm going to say it probably will. Well, Black never had a black, white, and, you know... No. Co- uh, cookie, you know. You know they, never did a gr- they never did a gray for black and white. They did black <laughs> and white, too. I but- think Z is... It makes sense since there is a Z... Mega evolution or Z evolution in this? Yeah, definitely. But you're forgetting about they did Diamond and Pearl on the DS too. So there's three Pokemon games on DS. The 3DS is going to be around for a while longer. I'm sure they're going to be thinking about you know. I got well, a the, feeling. The other question is, do you it's do be more? Well, do you, the the remastering of Fire Red and then we had Soul Silver. Ruby All and of, Sapphire is next. Well, yeah. Well, basically, my question is. Since Game Boy Advance, you're now able to trade in with all of these. So the only one left out in the cold is Yellow. Yellow is the only one that cannot transfer Pokemon into the current generation of Pokemon. And that game, there's no exclusives really. Does it? Is that would they remake Yellow? I think that might sell quite a bit. <laughs> uh, I would like to see Yellow in 3D. Yeah, I would like that. Basically, cool. <laughs> make make it more like the uh, you know. Like be like X and Y, it'd be like more like the anime, it'd have Pikachu in there, be story driven, I think it'd be cool. Yeah. I'll tell you, it is a lot of fun, Soul Silver. Your lead Pokemon follows you around, and those little sprites are so adorable in, in Soul Silver. Oh, I didn't know they followed you around in Soul Silver. That's cool. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Uh, the Poke Walker thing seems cool. I think I might want to buy one of those things. Did you ever get into that, the Poke Walker for Soul Silver? I had a. I never had the one for Soul Silver. I know it came with it. Heart Gold, yeah, it came with the game. Um, I had a little uh, Pikachu, like the original. What was it called? It was just like a little Pikachu, like virtual pet that was yellow, and you walk around, and every time you took a step, it would like learn to like you. What were they called? I'm gonna look it up. Because the Poke Walker, you can sync it with your game, and you have mm-hmm. your Pokedex basically in your po- in your pocket, as well as you're able to teach your Pokemon like how to surf and do moves that it normally can't do without you taking a lot of steps. So if you do this, you get a Pokemon in your game that you can get nowhere else besides using that Pokewalker like crazy. Yeah, and I've also heard that that is one of the most uh, reliable uh, pedometers for some reason. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, well, if that's like the most the... reliable, I have high hopes for the Wii Fit activity sensor. Yeah. Uh, what, I always wondered... The XL, the 3DS, I mean, <laughs> has a pedometer in this thing. And it counts your steps all day long. Why not build in Poke Walker 2XYZ? You know? they, ha- they have the Poke Miles thing. What is that? Uh, yeah, you so can trade that, it for, like, potions and stuff. Okay. That is just how many people you have encountered, like, passerbys. From from what I understand. I thought it had to do with walking some of steps in the game. That's what I kind of thought, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I looked it up in the game and it did say something about passerby. So. Okay. And as far as friend codes, if you'd like to uh, be friends with us on the 3DS, just throw that in the YouTube comments or in um, the, the chat room or Q&A here and we will um, add you and uh, all that good stuff. And um, our friend codes are available. Um, 
Mine is, I think, on my YouTube channel profile. But yeah, anyways, we will uh, just throw that in there and we will send our friend codes out on the next uh, edition of the show notes. Mm-hmm. So, um, as far as Hooker we Walker. make a yellow, yeah, I'm pretty excited for that. I mean, if if there is one, because I had already showed you guys. I feel like I'm going to break my game off <laughs> whenever I'm playing it. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it just hangs out there on my, my Game Boy Advance SP, so... Does it make sense to remake GBA games for this era? I mean, since they are transferable to... Like, was the main reason to remake those games so they could transfer to the current generation? Was that the main reason, I feel? Yep. Or am I wrong? That was the, I'm, that was the main reason, yeah. So... And money, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it could... could this, I mean, if Yellow's not remade, are they done with that? I... Uh... I don't know. That's. I feel. Up up until now, I feel like I could tell you, but with, I feel like they're changing so much in Pokemon. I don't know what to expect next. I kind of want Fire Red, Red in the X and Y style. <laughs> I do too because it's <laughs> be a, so it, great. It's the original, so of course I want it in X and Y style. I want that game every generation <laughs> to be updated. <laughs> so. Little um, sidetrack here uh, with Fire Red. So I tried to acquire a copy. And yeah, this is sad. Ninety-five <laughs> percent of all eBay listings for Pokemon games in the GBA era and below, I'm sure, are fake copies. <laughs> um, it, it sucks. So I had to look at. I was looking at eBay reviews, and I didn't notice because some were neutral that you know fake copy refund was fine. But most eBay listings are fake. So I've gone through now two... I did. I went through two two fakes that got refunds already, which is good. Wow. Um, I got really upset the first guy because of what he was doing, you know? It's like, you mentioned nowhere on your listing that this is a fake copy. And uh, he tried, you know, but, uh, I, you know, made him feel really bad. He's doing something illegal and... He refunded me before I was able to ship them back, which is good. So those should be here tomorrow, the fake copies. Uh, <laughs> so what do they look like? Do they look different? It's hard to spot on the pictures because they're not HD enough to really tell. Um, on the Fire Red, the sticker won't be as metallic looking. Yeah. It's... That's the biggest giveaway. Yeah. And if you actually have a copy, you can look underneath. It will say Nintendo or there will be a battery thing in there. But from the pictures, it's really difficult to tell because they look pristine. So what I had to do is, the best way to do this is get a box and manual version, which is more expensive, but you're almost guaranteed it's going to be original because no frauder is going to waste their time buying boxes and I manuals. can't believe this is a thing people do. It's a big business and on eBay. These people making up fake copies of the game, which the reason you don't want a fake copy is, first off, it's fake and, you know, I'm legitimate, but the real reason is most of them won't save. They won't do the tr- uh, Pokemon transfers, and... You know, you'll be with the crap game that you wasted all this time in. Yeah. yeah, that sucks. How much did you pay for the whole box? It looks like they're they're pretty expensive, like thirty six. Oh, that's not for bad. a fire red manual box. So, which is uh, pretty cool, you know, fire red with manual box in the game. So, it's good. Uh, but the 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 fake that had a twenty dollar fake, and probably the main giveaway in the first batch was it was all five GBA games for like. Fifteen bucks. Yeah, I'm seeing that here. I'm looking at I'm, I'm looking yeah. at auctions now. And there's a bunch of auctions that have all five games for GBA, and they they're, look so beautiful and perfect. And it's like yeah. they're fakes. Yeah, once I saw you post that about the fakes, I was like, no way. And I went on, and then I started seeing all those bundles. I was like, okay, this is it's a huge ridiculous. business, and it's so yeah. depressing because like I don't feel safe buying a Pokemon game on eBay anymore. And like I'm not sure is DS wow. this is this a problem with DS games too with like uh, Soul Silver and stuff. DS I feel like it's got to be harder to to I don't know. So could you if if you stick one of these games in to your system it plays. It you'll plays know you'll know pretty quick if you try transferring or saving and getting back into it. Um, they might have gotten better, but saving is the biggest giveaway where it won't save or yeah. it saves and you come back and it says your data has been deleted. So I feel like DS would have a little bit better, maybe encryption or, or ways to protect against stuff like so. this. 
Yeah, GBA is just as awful with that stuff. So oh, yeah, be careful a, out there, folks, older. if you're getting into the older games like I am. Oh, wow. This is. Yeah, when you first said this, I thought this was crazy. I didn't believe you at first. Nine, I, I'm, I'm po- like 95% of the games out there are fakes. It, it's, it makes me so angry and sad at the same time. Like, all these horrific people just, you know, oh my gosh. tricking people into it. And the sad part is, most people that get their copies. They don't know any better, and they leave positive reviews, perfect copy of the game, you know, and then uh, not until you see the negative reviews where people actually know what they're buying, or, you know, figure it out and leave re- negative reviews. And Yeah, this person on his picture has has 12 copies of the game just lined up, and he's selling, you know, obviously you get one copy when you buy it, but it's just so obvious that it, that can't be real. Like, I thought, copies. the reason I thought they were so cheap, I'm new to this, right? So, I'm new to this, I thought, hey, they mass-produced Fire Red, and everyone bought a copy, and they're, that's why the prices are so cheap, because they're everywhere, and that's not the case. They're actually pretty rare. Yeah, my understanding is they sold about 12 million of Fire Red and Leaf Green all together, so... Which not is that a many, lo- actually. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, much. for a fair amount for a GBA game, but, uh... Yeah. But anyways, be careful out there, folks. Um, I... I I got pretty angry last week. It's like throwing money down the drain these fake games. I'll get some fake games in to see what they look like, and then uh, I said I'd ship them back to the guy. I feel like I should, but it, it, I don't know. It feels like I kind of should kind of destroy this uh, stuff, like put the fire. Uh, well, but sucks. yeah, I should probably ship it back to the guy. Yeah. So you can sell it to some other non-suspecting person. Yeah, it sucks. But I, you know, you ch- eBay doesn't really have a way to report uh, like. You can report this guy as selling all fake copies. And this guy was selling fake copies of, like, the Little Mermaid DVD and stuff. Like, his whole account is fake products. Seems like eBay should boot people off that do that. I would wish they would. Yeah, they should. They should do a little bit better policing on... Because it is against the rule, uh, terms and service. It is. So. so. Before you send that back, Tim, you should do a video and kind of show the... Show the differences. <laughs> well, I'm going to get the Fire Red in, the real one, so I'll yeah. compare. I just hope I don't mix them up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll be sure not to mix them up. That'd be pretty bad. Yeah, that, that would be a good video. So, um, I to get Fire Red, I also had to get a GBA. So, I was initially going to go to the Rolls, Rolls Call Gaming, but I didn't want to spend $150 on a amazing GBA, which glass and backlit and new casings and stuff. So, instead, I got a mint condition $25 purple GBA. Should be here tomorrow, so next week I'll have some impressions on that, which will be cool. And uh, if you stayed, uh, if you watched the or listened to the other podcast, I also got a Game Boy collection, so watch or listen to that one to hear about some Game Boy discussion, which is fun. Pretty cool bundle there. Um, anyways, what, what's uh, John? What's your next topic today? Oh, uh, the only uh, I've been knee deep in Pokemon. That's all I've really been doing this week. But I we did get some cool information about the next Zelda game. A simple quote: "I'll say more at E3 2014." So um, mm-hmm. producer Zelda's come out and said, "Yeah, we're going to be hearing about the new Zelda game at the next E3," um, which is a little sooner than I'd expect, considering we're just a year, two years, you know, a year and a half into the Wii U. Um, we'll hear about it, but we might not have it for another two oh, or three years. We'll definitely not have it next holiday season. I can't see them waiting much longer than that on from announcing, you know, from showing off things, some stuff from sure. the game, and not actually releasing. You don't want to be like right Watch Dogs showing off in 2009, having it delayed until <laughs> is, 2014. Is, is that when it first they first showed it off? Watch Dogs. Yes, they showed it off like a year or two before the next gen was announced officially. Okay, well let's talk about that because that that was a little disappointing to me. I'm actually okay with this. Um, okay. Because, uh, so Watch Dogs got delayed till April 2014 or so. And this is a game I'm really excited for, but this winter, I've got so much stuff to play, and it'll be really nice to have an awesome game come out uh, when a uh, traditionally slow period for, for the console. For any console, really. I could see that. I was just a little disappointed because other than Sonic, I don't feel like there's much third-party support coming this winter for the Wii U. We got Batman, Assassin's Creed. There, yeah, there's Batman, uh, Call Assassin's of Creed, Duty. Call of Duty. But you know, this is uh, this is when I was the this is one of the ones I was most I was excited most for. anxious for this yeah. one. Yes. 
So it was a little disappointing to me, but I, I agree with you. It's, it's still nice. coming. It's, it's, not still, it's still coming. It's not canceled. I hope they wouldn't cancel it. They I mean, won't. Ubisoft, when they delayed Rayman, it ended up being a good delay where it's a better game for it. I think they probably sold less copies because of the delay, but besides that point. Yeah. Well, I'm still excited about the game. I was just a little, you know, whatever. It'll, I'll get over so, it. So, yeah, I also picked up, uh, I was at GameStop to get Soul Silver because I was impatient <laughs> like that. Amazing, GameStop has every DS game for Pokemon available if you just walk in. <laughs> but for 4 bucks, I get this little NFC figure for Rumble U. And uh, I don't have Rumble U yet, but it's like, hey, let me pick this up. Because my local store is down in Massachusetts where they actually had these in stock. My local store sells out of them instantly whenever they get stock in. So I was very happy to get Pikachu. It is random, and I'm glad to get my, one of my favorites there. That's cool. So. Yeah, uh... Going back to the Zelda uh, news, there's um, an XL coming. They, in. Yeah, oh but, yeah. Uh, they they also said that they plan to announce or speak about the new Zelda on Wii U at the New York Comic Con, but they weren't prepared, so they they decided to push it off. Oh really? I didn't hear yeah. that. Yep, so. that's cool. I mean, obviously, yeah. There was a little. Apparently, there's an interview with a website for a gamer that. They just asked, you know, the producer, Ijiam Anuma, um, how's the game coming along? He said, of course it's coming along. Um, <laughs> but he didn't mention that, yeah, we're going to be using the gamepad to its full potential. Um, they also mentioned, we don't do a Zelda game every year because quality is not there when you do a game every year. A little, interesting. Yeah. A little interesting. dig at Call of Duty <laughs> that pushes stuff out every year. Yeah, interesting, yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah. In Majora's Mask, evidently we'll know more about that storyline. By the time we finish A Link Between Worlds. It's so, such a tease. Like, <laughs> you'll know more by the time you finish this game. I, I kind of wonder if there's DLC for A Link Between Worlds. We saw this on a collector's edition uh, of the version of the game coming out in the United Kingdom. It's DLC. Um, I kind of w- would love it. A surprise announcement. $40 DLC. You get Majora's Mask and <laughs> after you finish it. So this this new DS is pretty cool. Yes. Yes. So Nintendo, <laughs> they have a funny way about soaking money out of people like me. Um, but it's, I mean, it's a European release. Nope. Well, GameStop no. Black Friday ad leaked already. Uh, has the Zelda XL priced at two hundred and twenty or thirty dollars? Let me look it up here. Uh, I think it's two nineteen. I see. Yeah, two nineteen. So basically, you save twenty bucks off the game, and you get it there. It looks so, like there's also a Luigi's Mansion. Bundle. I think that's old, though. I think they've had that for a while. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. the D. That's a DS. Oh, three wow. DS. Okay. Just oh, regular three DS. Okay. Never mind. But uh, yeah, two twenty. So um, I, I got the Luigi one. I got the Pokemon one. I've got my red one over there. And um, <laughs> I'm ordering this Zelda one because it's so awesome. Like, it's a beautiful piece of artwork. Like, it's gold on the inside uh, with the black around the screen. And it's black in the bottom for the two worlds. Gold. Like, it's such a beautiful handheld. And um, that'll be like $800 in 3DSs this year for me. <laughs> That's so sad. I'm going to have to get this one. It's it's going to be the first time I've ever bought a limited edition anything, any type of machine. So, it's uh, so yeah. beautiful. Like, I saw this, and it's like, that is gorgeous. Like, when you open up, the gold surrounding the black screen, and whew, it gives me shivers just looking at this thing. Like, I, I'm looking at pictures of it now, and, yeah, the Triforce, just, just the way they position it, and the... Uh, the, they got the low force, I guess you could call it, on the yeah. black side. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, this is one sick little it's system. So hot. But, yeah, for me, like, uh, this is my main 3DS, so this will be part of my collection. Like my uh, like my Luigi one, it'll be unopened, just part of my collection. Uh, I think download cards will be in this one, or a card. So I will open it up just to grab that card so I can get a digital copy of the game. So... Technically, it's only 180 for the console for me. Right? You know. <laughs> but, yeah, so I'm definitely getting this one. I think it'll sell out pretty fast. Uh, the Black Friday yeah. ad says they'll have some in stock, so I think GameStop and other places will reserve some of their stock only for that day. But uh, on the 20th, when the game comes out, um, get your hands on one of these, because these will go fast. Yeah, I think I might switch this to my main system. 
Really? Okay. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, that's what I. It's plan pretty on. nice. It's. I mean, I love my 3ds. It, it's but... so flashy. So like, uh, it, it's a beautiful, beautiful object. But uh, I, I can't do. I can't justify doing two system transfers in like one month. So you only have five during the total course of your lifetime, unless you call it Nintendo. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's gorgeous. So, um, I, a question during the Game Boy show that I did with Mark is. I've got three, soon four, 3DS XLs. How do I manage all these things? What do I do with all of them? So, um, just briefly here. Um, uh, so most of them are for the collection, so to speak. Uh, they're for the, the, the stuff behind me. But um, I do keep my red one in use, and I use that for local street passing to game systems that way. Um, for Animal Crossing, uh, economies... <laughs> For uh, <laughs> perhaps Pokemon local trading in the future, who knows? So, and just to test out what is local multiplayer like on games. So, it's uh, it's it is purely uh, having a second system is purely to just <laughs> game the system, so to speak. Uh, but yeah, I, I with with this I do just primarily use the system, and the other ones are just when I want to check something out. Uh, with cartridges, you can swap cartridges, and the save files are saved in the cartridges, so you can do that. I'm all digital, so I can't do that. So, um, yeah, that, that's that's basically how it works for me. Yeah, uh, um, I probably won't keep my my blue one. So you'll sell it? I don't. Know. Yeah, I probably sell it. I, I'm not really one to collect systems uh, as as far as having multiples. And but, you don't want to uh, street pass it yourself either, not like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'll sell mine. <laughs> it's really awesome having two 3ds's in the house. So I can, you can imagine yourself. Yeah, because every cool. day you get a little green light. It's like yay! <laughs> <laughs> so happy. Uh, it's kind of sad. And it's I've funny. yeah, having two copies of Animal Crossing is great because I can like you know game the system pretty well at like, with turnips and stuff. Man, my my poor Animal Crossing people are probably like, where did John go? Where is he? Because he has not been around in Animal Crossing this past Pokemon week. Pokemon invaded. Pokemon yeah. is, yeah. Yeah, I haven't po played Animal Crossing in a week. I'm kind of surprised they don't have a, as a side series, Pokemon Crossing. You live in a Pokemon village. And oh my gosh. That would about... sell like hotcakes. Oh. There's so much money on the table with Pokemon. They're... They don't even realize it. I mean, people have been asking for a full 3D console-based Pokemon RPG for, you know, since the, 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 the yeah. 64, and they still haven't done that. So, yeah, there's a so, lot they could do. Um, what else in the news? So Hulu Plus is now on the 3DS, and they made actually a big deal about um, basically you're watching your Wii U, then you walk out the door, and it's on your 3DS. Uh, the Twitter account for Hulu is actually pretty receptive. Like I said, hey, you should add a local cache feature, so... I can walk out the door and still watch stuff when I'm on Wi-Fi because that doesn't never never happens. I don't have Wi-Fi on the road, so they're actually pretty receptive. They forwarded to that the sport team there, but uh, it looks like a great great designed application. And if you're into Hulu Plus, I think Wii U and 3DS, it's a cool little ecosystem they built there. Yeah, yeah that's I, cool. Yeah, I think it's nice to have that. Um, I mean, I always check it out, but still the, the 3DS. Screen is not the quality of like my iPad or something so watching it on the go on the 3DS is not it's not for me they need to do 3D movies on Hulu Plus that would be huge yeah I feel yeah so John I got some cool news for you I kind of tweeted this a little bit ago um, okay Nintendo World Report does a couple podcasts and one of the, those guys actually was part of the Colorado flood and lost all his systems mm. and he lost his Wii U during that flood and he called up Nintendo and asked, hey, uh, my Wii U got damaged in the flood. And evidently system trans transfers on the Wii U are, is not a... You don't have to get like a police report. You don't have to give any detailed explanation, uh, explanation of why you want to do this. You, you just tell them, hey, this is the reason I'm upgrading from basic to deluxe. They had a huge backlog when the Zelda one came out because people wanted to do that. So if you call up Nintendo... Um, they'll actually do the whole system transfer. Is there's, this for real? It's for real. What? There's So the 3DS, you can't do this as much unless you have a police report because there's no way to deactivate this device. On the Wii U, they built in something. So 
it can deactivate the old Wii U from your account next time it's online. So that is built into the Wii U, not on the 3DS. So basically just call them up, say I want to do a system transfer, and they'll do it for you, and you're up and running a new, new system. You can re-download old games and all your everything goes with it. So it seems pretty legit. Mm. And I am have the impression they're probably working on a more user-friendly way to do this, but it is there. Just call up and... When you want to upgrade, that's how you do it. If this is true, this is frustrating because I've contacted Nintendo support multiple times and asked them about this, and their response always is, there's no way to do this right now. Now, so did you contact them on the phone or email? I did the email thing, so... Maybe phone is better. Like, maybe they thought, like, hey, only user, user-facing user features are allowed to do this versus if you call I don't know. You get a different team, maybe, if you call them. But, yeah, so I was listening to their podcast, and evidently this is a very popular thing if you just call their number and they'll do it for you. That's good to know. I'm glad to hear that, that it's something they're able to do, at least. Even though it's not, you know, built in the system, that's something that they can at least do if a customer needs them to or wants them to. That's awesome. Yeah, so whenever you're upgrading, just give them a call. (laughs) I, yeah, I'd, I'd still, I might... I, I want the Zelda system so bad, but I, I have a feeling there's going to be a Mario Kart system bundle. There'll be all sorts of bundles. I know <laughs> that's I know that's why I'm just kind of waiting right now. So okay, I really wanted that, that Zelda game. I know I still so wanted hot. to. I know I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hot, but uh, yeah, uh, um, it is three hundred dollars. So it's like wow, it's three hundred dollars for another Wii U. Um, yep. But yeah, then again, I paid that much for. Almost. Uh, <laughs> never mind. <Yeah. laughs> um, Sonic reviews. Um, the sound that come out here. And it's in Europe already. They got it a week early, evidently, because oh, cool. we're not cool enough. <laughs> um, so it's getting very mixed reviews, as Sonic games do. It's pretty universally decided that the 3DS version is pretty crappy. But the oh. Wii U version, a lot of people are digging it. Some people... It didn't be, ma- match their expectations for what they determined it should be, so they're giving it bad reviews. So um, I'm definitely picking this up uh, day one, and I actually canceled my canceled my Batman Arkham's pre-order because I didn't feel like playing that yet. Because um, I haven't played the first one yet. It's still in my library, sit collecting <laughs> dust. So I'm gonna wait until I finish that one. Oh, these mixed reviews. Sonic always gets always gets mixed reviews. Um, I haven't read any of these reviews. I'm kind of waiting until the game comes out because I know I'm going to get it anyway. So I'll just I'll wait and see myself. I think on this one. So speaking of reviews, I, I talked a little bit about this on Twitter. Is that I find that with the Wii U, you know that the types of games on there are so so different. Than, than any other console that when they're reviewed I don't feel that reviewers have enough time or put in enough time to the game to actually give you a true review mm-hmm. so it's it's always I mean it, it's pretty negative uh, you, cause, you know, yeah, Animal Crossing they gave them like three months to review because they knew they needed that much time <laughs> yeah. I wish they did that more often because I think games do deserve more time like that yeah um Quick side note, Siri Pokedex. If you call, ask Siri, Wolfram Alpha Pikachu, it'll pull up some information about Pikachu or Squirtle or whatever one. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, 649 Pokemon are in the Wolfram Alpha, and Wikipedia has some of them. So I said, tell me about Pikachu, and it pulled up Wikipedia and some information about Pikachu, which is kind of cool. <laughs> um, uh, uh... I was on the Mac Rumors forums, and one of the guys there had the... Uh, Pokerus, there's a uh, virus that your uh, Pokemon can get, and they spread to all the people in your party. And when they have this virus, they level up with better stats and level, level up quicker and stuff. And it lasts for like four days. So it's, it's very good to have virus. So um, it's a good thing to have, is what you're yes. telling me. Okay. Very good. Um, I have not traded with them yet, but uh, if you encounter people like that with the Pokerus. Uh, the Pokevirus, uh, go trade with them instantly because it's pretty sweet. Um, another question I have uh, with Pokemon, um, eBay's, there's a lot of people selling fully loaded cartridges with like all 500 Pokemon at level 100 and stuff. Are these uh, hacked Pokemon that aren't legitimate that 
they won't be accepted into Pokemon Bank because they check for that. What games are these? Like what? All of them, really. You know, you can get a fully loaded Black Two if you wanted with all 649 Pokemon at level 100. Well, here's the there. You do know about the Pokemon generator apps they have on the App Store and stuff, right? What do those do? So there's Pokemon apps that you can get on your iPhone, Android device, whatever, that you can literally tap a few buttons and it generates a Pokemon that you can send to the, to the DS. Um, Sounds it, really cheap. It, it's, it works. I've seen people do it. I'm not exactly sure how they do it. Because I'm pretty scared because, like, Pokemon Bank says it'll check for hacked Pokemon and won't allow you to upload those. I, I don't know much about... If it's con- if this is considered hacking, um, yeah, they're, there's they're called Poke Builder apps, where you literally put in the stuff and they let you send send the Pokemon. Have you ever done this before? No, I haven't done this, but I, my roommate has done this with when he was playing uh, X and Y, so it definitely works. I kind of um, feel like that that cheapens experience for me if I ever did that. I definitely, yeah, it's definitely something I wouldn't do, but what I'm saying is this is probably how they're accomplishing these full Pokedexes or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I do wonder if they're hacked hacked Pokemon where they won't be in the bank. Like, it, it does check for something. So that'll be kind of curious to see when those come out, if we'll get people angry that they can't transfer their hacked Pokemon. Yeah, I wouldn't trust it. <laughs> yeah, I figure, like, that takes all, all the fun of collecting all 749 Pokemon or whatever there is, if... You're just going to cheat and not even, you know, catch him. You're just going to generate him out of thin air. Um, so, 4 million copies in two days. Uh, one out of every 10 people who own a 3DS bought Pokemon X and Y. Nice. <laughs> um, unless there, there are other side people that did X and Y both. So, you have people like that that kind of brought those numbers down a little bit. Um cross-platform play Nintendo is open to, so potentially we could have Call of Duty Wii U playing with Call of Duty Xbox and PlayStation 4. That is possible if there, the other parties are open to that. Yeah, um, I've heard, we've heard that before. There was a chess game, an indie chess game they were, a developer was working on and said Nintendo is open to them uh, working with iOS. So yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, Steam's another platform that they were interested in and Steam's open, I think, to that, so... That could be a cool future with Steam and Nintendo, you know, online connecting. I agree. I feel that Steam would be more likely to do this than than Sony or Microsoft. Or big bad Microsoft. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, they like their closed ecosystem. So is it their decision? Do you, do you think... Um, I don't know. Like, do you think it's up to the developer? Do you think it's really up to Sony and Microsoft to... Make these calls. Because you work on their pl- Microsoft Live and now paid for Sony Live thing. That's true. So I've got to feel that you have to get their permission somewhere. I, I, yeah, I'm sure that's right. That's a shame. It's kind of yeah. cool. Nintendo's like the good, good guy on Nintendo. Let's uh, be good to third party developers, indie developers. Let's allow you to do whatever you want, really, <laughs> within reason. Nintendo in the past 12 months has shown so much more openness to developers in pretty much every aspect. It's nice to see. It is pretty exciting. Uh, there was a... So, as far as Nintendo changing and growing, um, Nintendo has a Vine account. You know those what? Little, you know those little <laughs> five-second videos that do a thing? Um, I didn't so know So search, this. John, search for... On your phone, perhaps would be better. Search for, like, Nintendo Vine. Uh, they did a Vine showing off a treasure chest for Zelda Link Between Worlds as a bonus pre-order item. And it's yeah. hysterical, because you have... <laughs> I think it's... Uh, an, is it Iwata and Anuma, or... Um, yeah. But, yeah, and, it's, it's great. Uh, <laughs> and, yeah, so I decided, you know, I'm going to start, start going digital on the 3DS, and then they come out with this, and it's like, oh, I want that treasure chest so I can... You know, open it up and do more. See, own. Aaron, uh, if, in fact, we get a download code like we did with the Wind Waker box over there, you'll be able to sell that download code on eBay for 30 40 bucks, and still get the physical copy of the game with your uh, 3DS XL. So you could do the best of both worlds. Oh, okay. I really do hope it is a download code. Uh, oh, go. Sorry. Yeah, this is the uh, Nintendo Vine account. Go to the most recent one there. 
I think this is the most recent. Of Europe. Of Oh, it's of Europe. Oh, okay, I see. But if, it, if it's not a download code, I wonder how the heck am I going to transfer that game to my Pokemon Edition 3DS XL. I have to give Nintendo a call. It's like, hey, I've got four XLs. I want this game on my the one I use, actually. So, hmm. uh, as far as uh, Mario Party, some additional details about Street Pass. Um, complete. So with Street Pass and Mario Party 3DS, you can compete against ghost data people. You can kind of real life, which is pretty cool. So it's kind of like fake multiplayer. Um, it adds basically adds to the single player experience. Choose from different difficulties. Compete in a mini game tower. Unlock collectibles. In these include voices, music, and character illustrations. And you can buy collectibles with Mario Party points. So that, that's kind of some additional details about that game. That pretty sad. Sad does not have online play. Yeah, I could care less about this game. I'm just I done. like if it gets if there is a season where there's nothing big coming out. I might pick this up later on. Mm. Oh, <laughs> say doubt. some stuff. Oh, oh, oh yes. So let me. Uh, I pulled up the Vine video just so John could see it. And uh, here we go. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? Like, I, I want that. Yeah, that's Nintendo cool. Nintendo is so wacky. <laughs> like, they're so out there. Like. Let Nintendo be Nintendo, and they do wacky things like that. Yeah. I want that little box. So yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's designed to hold a 3DS cartridge. Oh. So oh. you put your favorite okay. game in there. <laughs> just one. Nice. I think just one. Um, <laughs> close out the show, I've got uh, the GameStop Black Friday ad. I wanted to just kind of go over what's in there, what notable things are in there. Uh, first off, your white with you, John, is not so limited after all is making a comeback in the Skylanders Wii U bundle. Oh, get, okay. Where you get the white Wii U, Skylanders figure, Skylanders game. You get $25 gift card at GameStop, uh, all for $300. Yeah, we mentioned last week that they were sticking the, the basic around in Europe, too. So, yeah, it's it's hanging in there. How much, it, how much is it? $300. It's and you get a $25 three. gift card as well with that. Okay. I'm wondering if this might and be And you get a, a backpack, tactic. too. Sorry. Wow. <laughs> I'm wondering if this might be a tactic to try to get rid of, of all those white ones. It's like, okay, they're not selling as well. Let, let's just make this bundle. Maybe it's package it. definitely possible. <laughs> um, Black Friday, Raymond Legends at GameStop, $25. Wow. On nice. Wii U. That's the big discounted Wii U game. It is. Well, Ubisoft has come out and had some bad news recently. They said it didn't sell what they expected, but I think their excitations have always been way messed up. Yeah. <laughs> it's Rain Man. Has that ever sold well? That ever. and Splinter Cell, they said, didn't do well. And their stock dropped, but... What, well, that's whatever. after they announced... Uh, the delay. The Watch Dogs yeah, delay. delay. It just yeah, so. went... Whoop. Because, like, that's, launch titles are a big deal. Like, people buy games they normally don't buy because that's all you can buy at launch. Yeah. I mean, I... I'm not a big fan of watching stock prices and having them kind of having that be the the judge of the, how the company's doing because it's very not always accurate. So I, I didn't want to I didn't yeah. mean that in a, a bad way. No, but. stock is crazy, and we all know that from watching Apple stock with people just talking silly stuff. Yeah. Um, the GameStop ad was the place that leaked the USA release of that 3DS XL for Zelda. Um, 40 bucks on Black Friday for Xenoblade Chronicles and Metroid Prime Trilogy at GameStop. This Doesn't that make you so happy, Aaron? I bought well, both of those at the full price, <laughs> at 80 and 70 or whatever it was. Yeah, it's, it's very frustrating to, to see this. <laughs> um, also, I had heard that there is a, now a formation or, or the first steps of a class action lawsuit against GameStop for that, that, that whole incident. Uh, that's no. silly to me. Um, when they did reduce the price, they gave me coupon and money back off of that. Yeah, so I, yeah, I got some in store credit, so I was okay with it. But like, I think it's crazy. Like, it's it's a business. Let them sell for what they sell for. I bought Soul Silver for fifty True. bucks. That's more than the X cost me, and that's an old game because <laughs> used prices are what they are. It would be a hundred bucks on eBay to buy those games. I think unless those have dropped because of GameStop, who knows? 
Um, well, you get a free Hot Wheels toy with this Hot Wheels game for 3DS. That is pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Best pre-order bonus ever. Yeah, that's pretty, uh, pretty... Hey, if there's some Hot Wheels collectors out there, that might be the only time they can get this this Hot Wheels car. <laughs> and then the collectible edition of that uh, uh, Link Between Worlds includes the Treasure Chest poster and DLC, which I believe is a virtual console title of Link's Awakening or something. I forget which one. That'd be cool. Um, Comes in a cool box. Oracle so. of Seasons. Oh. Is it? Yeah. Interesting and, choice. And then the last thing... Um, we all thought Year of Luigi was kind of finished, right? You know, it's October now, and Nintendo doesn't have anything new with that. But in Europe, they've got a special coin that uh, was different uh, from the ones we received over here at the Best Buy event and at uh, (laughs) Comic-Con. It is the same front without any coloring, and the back has Club Nintendo with the Mario hat on it, kind of like the Mario coin used to be. And it comes in a little green uh, pouch. And, it's cool. Uh, Are you going to get one of these? I got I, I to get one. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I got to complete the collection. And I hope I mean, these aren't crazy expensive. On I was going to say, do you know how much these are going for? I, they're not. No one has them yet. So once they're out, we'll know. I'm not sure. If, I've got two of the regular coins. I'm not sh- I really want one because it's like I have every year Luigi <laughs> paraphernalia. I like everything. This pouch. And this pouch, pouch. Is cool. yeah. and I could put all three coins <laughs> in the pouch, maybe. But yeah, and then in, te- in, in Europe they're getting a Luigi XL. United States, I'm not sure if we'll get that. I really, I'm not sure. Didn't our, they already have the Luigi XL? Only for uh, Japan, which is the one I am. Oh, okay. And so it's coming on Europe November first, and no announcement here yet. Is it look different or is it the same? It's the same, just okay. you, you know, region code locking and stuff's different. Okay. Box is different, of course, no, in Japanese on it. Not a, yeah, not in Japanese. That's good. <laughs> but yeah, November 1st for them, and that'd be so bizarre if America was the only one that did not get the Luigi 3DS XL. It could happen. It yeah. could. Yeah. But I already have my Japan one. I don't need a silly U.S. one. You know? No. <laughs> so. Who needs English? Exactly. So, uh, I am out of topics today. What about you guys? <laughs> That's it for me. It's been Pokemon all week long. My Wii U has been turned off all week thanks to Pokemon. Me so too. Sad. Yeah, me too. My poor Wii U. Like, I love it, and there's so many games I want to play on it, but Pokemon. Yeah, Pokemon. Yeah, my Wii U has turned into a Hulu box while I play Pokemon. Because so. <laughs> it's like it's Pokemon. This thing, I'm 65 hours in, and it's my second most played game on my system, and I got it last week. Yeah, I, I 50 hours in... That's a quarter of the time I've spent in Animal Crossing. <laughs> right? And, I could totally see myself and less, surpassing Animal Crossing in this game in like by the end of this year. It took me four months to get 200 hours in Animal Crossing. It took me one week to get 50 hours in Pokemon. <laughs> yes! I could totally see me having 100 hours by the next show. That's just crazy to Isn't me. Isn't that I, nuts? I can't believe how much I've been playing it. I mean, it really, it's a great game. It makes me... It, I have a lot of nostalgia playing it just like... It, it really feels like they're really redoing the Pokemon series, and this is getting them ready for the future. I love it. I'm excited. I can't <sighs> wait to keep playing and, and beat the Elite Four and get Mew. I want or Mewtwo. I want Mewtwo. Now, <laughs> if you get two Mewtwo's, can those mate? I'm sure they can. You... Serious? They don't. <laughs> they wouldn't turn into a Mew, but they would turn into a Mewtwo. Okay. Because if I, uh, when Fire Red comes, uh, when I get Fire Red and both come on banks out, I could get the Mewtwo from Fire Red, send him up the X, start Can't mating. You? I thought you then could then use could... Ditto. What about Ditto? He doesn't work with legendaries in the uh, okay. book, guys. Okay. So when that happens, I think I could do some crazy GTS trading for Mewtwo's. <laughs> that would be so nuts. Like Mewtwo, I can get any Pokemon I want with Mewtwo, I'm sure. You're going to have a black market of Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, the breeding's pretty cool. Um, I, I just first started using it. You have to walk around with an egg for a while, which sucks. You can only have mm-hmm. five people in your party at a time. But That's why you jump on the bike and just go crazy with the bike. Oh, really? That's how you do it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, every step you take is an experience point, right? I, I guess. Yeah. I think I think that's how it works. And yeah, in um, Soul Silver, I got an egg like given to me. Oh, yeah. Topa, to- 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 Togepi. 
Togepi. He's not available in X, I don't believe, is he? I don't think so, nope. And does he evolve at all? Into Togechick, yeah. Togechick. Togechick. Oh, so I'll lose that dude? I guess I can mate the Togechick to get Togepi again. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I'm, I'm digging Pokemon. I'm... I don't know, I can see myself playing Pokemon the rest of this year and you know, just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ditto. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, with that, let's uh, close up the show. Um, Aaron, where can folks find you on the interwebs? You can find me with the username AL Rivera 58 on Twitter, YouTube, and Meverse, and also have my 3DS uh, friend code in the show notes. Very good. What, what about you, John? Where can folks find you? You find me on the interwebs at John Wesley, A J O H N W S L E Y A, at Twitter, Meverse, Instagram, everywhere. Um, on YouTube, though, on John's Nintendo Carts, so check it Excellent. out. And we all three really want as many friend codes as possible because Friend Safari, we need to max out our friend code <laughs> list to 100. So please send those in and we'll friend you and be good for everyone that are Friend Safaris in battle. And I'm looking to trade, so... <laughs> I'm look- yeah, I want to trade too, definitely. So, yes, with that said, thank you guys for listening. Um, we do record these shows live every Sunday evening starting at 8 p.m. Eastern, going until it's all done around 10 p.m., 10.30 and um, that's over at youtube.com slash T-C-H-A-T-E-N. Also, though, we have these brand new things called a Google Plus community. So if you search for the Nintendo Club podcast under the communities, you'll find our community. And the cool part about this is if you join our community, when we do live hangouts for community nights, I can invite everybody that's a part of our community to be on a live hangout. So when we do these community nights, if you want to participate in that, be a part of our community, and you'll be invited to be a part of that. So check that out on Google+. Plus. That'd be so cool. Let's do, we got to do that. We got to do that. That'd be, yeah. That's going to be so much fun. Especially for our Wii Sports night, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. When is Wii Sports? That's November, right? That's like in two weeks, John. Oh, that's so, oh, that's so close. I'm going to be playing the heck out of that. This is like we're, we're on the brisk of, like, Wii Sports, Wii Fit, Mario, oh, Sonic's next Mario. It's, oh, man, it's going to be good. <laughs> uh, but anyways, that ends our show for this evening. Uh, thanks, thanks everyone, for watching live, uh, those that are here. And uh, we'll talk to everyone again next week. Bye-bye. See ya.